in this tutorial we're going to take these flat 2D logos and change them into these nice 3D logos that you can use in your videos. Okay, let's get to it. Okay, as usual, we're going to be working in Fusion. So we need to get our Fusion composition, which if you've done as I've told you time and again, is in your favorites bar down here. If you haven't done that, make sure your effects library is turned on, go to effects and your Fusion Comp is at the top. If you click on the little star here, it will put it in your favorites bar for the next tutorial. So drag your Fusion Comp in and we will head into Fusion. Now, unusually, I'm using a couple of plugins for this tutorial, and the plugins that I'm using, uh, in particular the Crocodub plugin, means that you need to have Fusion Studio, unfortunately. So to get your plugins, you're gonna go and visit the Reactor uh, website over at We Suck Less. I've left a link in the description. You just need to sort of navigate down the page and you'll find the link to the installer. Install Reactor. Once you've done that, restart, resolve and come back. And we will go up to the workspace menu, come to Scripts, Reactor, Open Reactor. And you are looking for Crocodove, which will show up here. So you just check next to the name of the plugin that you want and it will install it automatically. You get lots of windows popping up here once they've all gone away. Before you close it all down though, the other plugin that I'm going to use is called Kickass Shaders. So if you type CAS, you get kick-ass shaders again just check to install you'll get all the windows that might take a minute or two because it's quite a lot to download once it's all stopped close it down you get your window saying restart restart resolve and come back okay so i'm going to start with the easier logos first so the facebook and the twitter logo so we'll use twitter as our example so bring your Twitter logo or whatever logo you want in, pop it into a viewer. What you need to do is take note of the resolution here. So 512 by 512. We're going to pipe this into a background node as a mask. So bring a background node in. What we're going to do is we're going to select this background. We're going to come to the inspector, click the image tab uncheck auto resolution and we're going to make this background the same size as our image so 512 by 512 now we take the output of our media and pipe it into the blue mask input of our background and we end up with this black outline we want this to be white so come back to your background go to color and just make it white Next, we're going to use two Crocodove uh, nodes, which will make our 3D image. So if you come, press Shift and Spacebar and type S Trace. We're looking for this S Trace Create. Add that. On its own, it doesn't do anything. So we need to pair it with another node. And that other node shift spacebar and type shape and you're looking for shape create 3d and add that now if we pipe that let me just connect that right click drag it over and you want it in the shape and then if you put that in your viewer you've now got a 2d image of your logo If you select Shape Create 3D and come to the inspector, you can see that it's got an extrude setting, which if you start to pull up, 
will do just that. It will extrude your shape. It's not very clear at the minute, but if you come to the top of your viewer where you've got this little dot, it says lighting and click it. It turns on pseudo lighting so you can get some idea of what you're doing. Now, if you want to, you can just leave it like that. Not a problem. You can't, I mean, what you can do is if you go into the shape create, you've got material and you can change the color of it, which is fine if you just want a flat color. But later on, you'll see that we don't want a flat color like when we do the Instagram logo. So what we need to do is make a material. And the way we make a material is we're going to take a second output from our media and we're going to pipe it into some sort of material producing node. In this case, we're going to shift spacebar and type cook and get the cook torrents node. If you right click on the output of your media, drag it over the cook torrents node, you get a drop down list of all the di different inputs and we're looking for diffuse color material. Now this gives us this funky material that looks like our Twitter logo, but wrapped around a sphere. We're going to put this onto our shape. To do that, output, right click from your cut torrents onto your shape, create 3D. And you've only got one option, which is your material input. And we have our Twitter logo. Now, if you look closely, you get all sorts of funkiness going on along this edge. So what we need to do is make the mask slightly bigger. To do that, we're going to bring in an erode dilate node, shift space bar erode. We're going to disconnect that, put it onto the erode like so, and then pipe the erode dilate back into our cook torrents. And now if we select our erode dilate, we can increase the amount and you'll see that this starts to solidify like so. And there you have your extruded 3D shape. After that, it's just a case of piping that into some sort of 3D scene and lighting it. Uh, I'll do that very quickly. At the minute, our render looks rubbish because our camera is sat right next to our um, logo, as is the spotlight. So we'll sort the camera out first. So if you select camera, come to the transform tab of your camera, use target, that will keep it pointing at the middle here, and then increase the Z until you can see your logo. Now at the minute you can see it because we didn't set the lighting in our render node. So select your render 3D node, turn lighting on, turn shadows on. And now if we come to our spotlight, again, transform, use target and pull back on the Z. And then it's about getting your spotlight where you want it to give you the nicest looking light. Now you can come back to your camera and position your camera so that you can see the 3D-ness of your logo. If, as in the example, you want to be spinning around your logo, you're gonna to need to put a second light in that's behind your object because at the moment the back's not lit. So you'd bring in a spotlight, pipe it up, again go to transform, use target. This time we're going to bring Z back so that your spotlight's going behind whatever it is you're looking at. And again you just need to position it where you want it then. So, and now we've got some lighting of some description all the way around so you can then spin 
or do what you want to it. So that's fairly straightforward, your Twitter logo. Now basically this section here, let's just bong that bit out of the way because that's just basically our 3D system that we don't need to worry too much about. These few nodes in the middle are the main sort of thing that we're interested in. Now to change out this media, the easiest way of doing it is if you bring your mouse so that it's just before this junction here, hold it over your pipe, press Alt or Option and click. You get this little doohickey called a pipe router. It means that you can now disconnect this media and these connections stay in place. So we can bring our Facebook in, pipe it in. Oh, that didn't work. Try that again, Simon. Pipe it into the input of your pipe router and you've got your Facebook logo. Now on a very basic level, we can do exactly the same with our Instagram logo. Like so, and you end up with a nice Instagram lozenge. And that looks quite nice as it is. However, I change this up a bit by cutting out this bit, the white bits. To do that, we need to change this because at the moment this is just a lozenge shaped mask. What we can do is produce a mask that will cut out these parts. And to do that, we're going to have a bitmap node. So again, click away, shift space, bitmap. And we're going to take a second output from our media into the bitmap. Make sure it goes in the yellow input, not the blue one. So we're viewing this bitmap, select your bitmap, Come to channel and change it to luminance. What you need to do is pull up the low until all you're left with is this white. And what we're going to do is we're going to invert it like so. Now anything that's white will stay, anything that's black will get cut away. And what we're going to need to do is cut this away. To do that we're going to need to add in, let me just put another pipe router in to make things clearer, like so. We're going to need to add another background. So we're going to bring in the background, put it underneath. We're going to change this background to the same size, which was 512, yeah. So again, come to image, auto resolution off, 512. 512 and we're going to disconnect this from our trace create we're going to merge it onto this background and then connect that merge back to our trace create and now we're going to bring this bitmap in as a mask like so and what you notice that that's done is it's now cut out these bits here what you can also do, again, click away, pipe erode for another erode and dilate node. And we're going to put this between our bitmap and our mask input. And now we can adjust the erode dilate to either have no white or we can bring it up so that you've got more of a white outline but still retain the cuts. Personal choice. So that's our Instagram logo. So the final logo was my own uh, sort of channel logo that I use. And I did this, I did this slightly differently. Uh, the, the basic principles are the same. We're going to use the bitmap and we're going to use the main sort of path like so. Now you notice it's gone funky. And the reason it's gone funky is because it's a different resolution. So we need to come to our background nodes and update their resolution. 
we need to do that for both of them. And now it's come back to how it should be. At the minute, this is a solid. And what I did was again, I messed with the mask here. So we're going to pipe it into our bitmap. And this time we're not going to invert it. So we need to come to our bitmap. We need to uncheck invert. And now what we end up with is this outlined frame of our text and the white circle. Like so. Now to get these bits clearer, you can play with the erode dilate on the bitmap. The other thing I did that's different is I didn't use the cup torrents material. So I can take all that out for the time being because we don't need it. What I did was I brought in a shader and this is where the kick-ass shaders came in that we talked about at the very beginning. It's a shift space bar and type CAS. This gives you a list of all the shaders in the kick-ass shader pack. And the one I used was this St. Nicholas Church one. This brings in these three nodes. And if you look at the shader, it looks like this. And all we do is we right click, bring it to our shape, create, and have it as our material input. And now you've got this very shiny effect and as I say we need to play with the erode dilate to get it as clear as we can uh, it's not ideal but you can get the general idea now what you notice at certain points you get this sort of stepping so again you can work through to find a place where you're not getting the stepping but you're getting your text as clear as you can it's you're not going to get it perfect but you can get it something like now the other thing about this is i don't like this straight pure reflection so what you can do bring this image which is what the reflections are driven from and just pop a blur node after it and crank the blur up a bit like so and now you come back to your road dilate you can zoom in a bit and see if you can get the bottom text a bit clearer like somewhere around about there I think is as good as you're going to get it And then you've got your spinny logo thing. So yeah, it's all to do this kind of effect. You're masking your background. You're masking this circle so that you end up with this. Anything that's black is deleted. Anything that's white is kept. And then that gets fed through to the 3D shape creator system here. And that's basically it. And that's how we end up with the 3D logos that we showed at the start. Hope that helps. I uh, hope it's useful. Again, apologies that it's studio only. It's not something I like to do because I know a lot of my subscribers are probably still using the free version of Resolve. Um, but I like the effect and I wanted to show it. Please feel free to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell and I will catch you on the next one. Cheers.